Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Max Daily Show, where we show you three cool things which we have 3D printed in the PC Mag Labs. Or rather, every day we show you one cool thing which we are testing here in the PC Mag Labs. I'm Sasha Segan, this is Tony Hoffman. If you are watching us live on Facebook, then you probably haven't shown up yet because it takes a couple of minutes for the audience to ramp up. But if you are here early, then uh, please make uh, comments, ask questions. Uh, Social Pete here will take your comments and questions and he will relay them to us and we can talk about, Tony knows a lot about printers, scanners, projectors. I know about phones. Um, and some other random stuff that I was reading about on Twitter. If you are on YouTube, then please like and subscribe. We have a new one cool thing every weekday uh, with, with a new thing which we are testing out in the PC Mag Labs. Here today, we have a very cool, rather large thing, which is the Dremel Digilab 3D45 3D printer, a four and a half star editor's choice 3D printer from Dremel. And now now I'm familiar with that as a company that makes a rotating tool that literally every DIY human on earth has in their toolbox, right? Exactly, yes. And, and so how long have they been making 3D printers? Is this a new thing for them? They've been making 3D printers for a few years. And uh, you're quite right, this is radically different than their n normal product fair. However, it does have the DIY maker element, so it fits perfectly uh, in a way into their, at least, vision, if not product line. Okay, so as, hmm. as a, as a mid-range 3D printer, why don't you walk us through some of the features here, what kind of, uh, what kind of material it uses, what kind of printing options we have, what kind of file formats it takes? Well, it uses, uh, basically it has a, uh, the uh, filament uh, spool holder is inside, mm -hmm. and it can use uh, Can we various, open it up? Yes. There we go. Mm -hmm. Both top and front ah, great. doors that open, mm -hmm. and uh, it takes uh, various types of uh, filament, including PLA, and then there's a, a special ABS-like PLA, which has a strength and uh, other properties that the uh, normal PLA uh, uh, doesn't have. And it can also take a custom, uh, there's nylon also filament that they sell. And uh, it can take custom filaments, as long as you know the temperatures at which the filament melts, you can set them on the, uh, on the LED. Mm -hmm. And uh, so basically that's uh, one uh, element. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a, uh, a build platform, which is uh, comparable to a build area, comparable to most of the, like the MakerBot and uh, the like. So it can print a pretty big uh, um, objects. Mm -hmm. It has uh, connectivity includes, there's a USB port in front. Uh, and uh, then there's also, that's for a USB thumb drive. And it has, uh, on the side, it has, uh, USB uh, 2 that you can connect with a computer and it has an Ethernet port and it also uh, is a Wi-Fi compatible so you can print from a printer or you can download the files to a USB key and uh, uh, print from so before we take our first question, which uh, now what file formats does it take? Is that relatively standardized across the world of 3D printers, or uh, is this something that you need to be aware of as you're choosing different kinds of 3D printers? Uh, it's pretty much, I mean, most of them take STL and OBJ files, but always in a printer like this, uh, the uh, you run them through the software, which is a pretty standard open source uh, software based on the Cura platform that we've seen in numerous other 3D printers. And basically, the software converts it either into Dremel's own uh, proprietary format or G-code before transmitting it. Mm -hmm. So you can bring in other file types mm -hmm. and it will convert them as needed to a usable format. Okay, uh, let's take our first question. How common are multi-headed 3D printers? Are they ones that you would be able to buy like for your home or 
Yes, we're seeing more and more multi-headed 3D printers. Some of them are uh, like uh, with a dual extruder printer. In many cases, you can print in, in uh, more than one color. And uh, they're coming down in price also. Uh, we've seen them in some uh, consumer uh, uh, models. They're not nearly as common as the, uh, the single extruder models, but, uh, but they are making inroads. Now, I've noticed that this printer has a touch screen on the front. Yes. Is that an interface that uh, you'll likely use? Is it an advantage to this printer, or is it mostly for a status display? No, it, it is, yeah, it is uh, for uh, basically s a status setup when you're initiating a print job, uh, particularly with a USB thumb drive, you have no choice but to use the, mm -hmm. the panel. Mm -hmm. So it is very practical. It wasn't quite as responsive as I would have liked. Uh, there were times when I had to press it two or occasionally more times before the mm -hmm. command went through, but it does, uh, it does work and it, uh, it definitely is a, a big benefit for a printer like this. Let's take another question. What happened to 3D printing food? Is that a thing? Uh, actually, we've been talking about that quite a bit. The, the, uh, the promised 3D food printers haven't been materializing on the commercial market. I've heard uh, that the, there's uh, some friction with the FDA in terms of their uh, certifying them. But uh, I mean, I've seen 3D food printers tested several years ago, but I have not, we have not actually been able to get any in from, uh, for uh, testing. Now, Dremel as a brand is known for, uh, as a brand, it's really known for sturdy, reliable products. Is that one of the advantages here? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, this printer, I mean, Dremel is an 86-year-old company, and uh, as you mentioned, it really made its name with rotary tools and uh, that's been its staple for actually for the entire uh, existence of the company. It's won many awards from, from uh, building and DIY uh, type publications. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1993 Dremel, which was based in Wisconsin, was bought by Illinois-based uh, Bosch. It's a major engineering firm and uh, Dremel actually started building 3D printers for their Bosch engineers so they could work on prototypes. So this wasn't originally designed as a commercial product. It was really an in-house thing that they could use in, uh, in, in designing uh, the, the engineering uh, prototypes that they needed, which I think is to its advantage. This was not uh, made for this was made for professionals, mm -hmm. and that's really its strongest uh, uh, market today. That's what they largely gear it towards. Now, is this differentiated in terms of print quality from other uh, mid-range 3D printers? Well, the uh, a couple of things in our testing, uh, print quality was always good to excellent. There weren't, if you look at the Yoda head, for example, the, uh, often it has serious problems getting the ears right. Uh, here they're pretty good. And uh, overall the print quality is above average. We have a, uh, a test object with geometric forms which are in a very highly inclined plane and it did very well in printing those out. So I would say that overall, uh, print quality is definitely well above average mm -hmm. and also it went through our test runs without a single misprint which is uh, which is rare okay. okay so particularly the combination of ease of setup ease of use high print quality and consistency mm -hmm. makes this sort of ideal for not only professionals but schools and uh, for uh, tech-savvy consumers, if they have some money uh, to throw around and they don't want to get some printer that they're, they're going to be uh, uh, wanting to uh, replace in a couple of years, this thing will, will likely be uh, future-proof for uh, quite a while. Let's take another question. We've got another question about 
sort of, uh, you know, on the edge uh, technologies for 3D printing sure. is subtractive printing, which I guess is would be like cutting something from like a larger piece of material possible? Well, that, I mean, that's done in a lot of other uh, machine uh, type operation. I mean, 3D printing by nature is an additive process in that you're building an object layer by layer. I mean, that's what they have drilling and milling and cutting and, and all sorts of things. I'm not quite sure how uh, mm -hmm. right. that, that would, uh, yeah. yeah, that's sort of uh, uh, what differentiates 3D printing from other uh, manufacturing techniques. You're adding rather than uh, removing. So this is our editor's choice in this mid-range price point. What is it competing with and why did you pick it over those competitors? Well, there is the Lexmark, not the Lex, excuse me, the Lulzbot. Right. <laughs> Lexmark makes 2D printers. Yeah, and uh, I hope they appreciate the, uh, the plug for them. But <laughs> at any rate, the Lulzbot uh, Mini is a, is a printer that uh, we tested about three years ago, and it costs about four or five hundred dollars less. And it does have a print consistency. The overall quality wasn't as good. It's not as versatile in terms of the uh, uh, the uh, types of filaments it could use. The uh, the um, um, just overall. I mean, this is just very well built. Uh, and uh, just when I compared all the individual elements mm -hmm. to the Lowe's bot, uh, it definitely was worthy, even with the higher price. If you go up a step, the MakerBot Replicator I was going to say, Plus. What about the MakerBot Replicator? Uh, that has a lot of extra features. It has. They have a much wider range of, of filament mm -hmm. types and colors. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a mobile app uh, and a lot of things that, uh, features uh, that are good. They have a whole workflow uh, set up for business. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it's a great printer for its price. It's about, I think about $2,500. Um, this has uh, most of the elements that the MakerBot has, including the, uh, the good print quality and uh, even maybe even better consistency at a lower price. It's yeah, and I really do like that reliability and consistency aspect because I've been hearing about uh, more uh, people in education, for instance, more schools, community colleges, uh, getting and using 3D printing in education, and what they're looking for, obviously, is something very reliable, very consistent. Yes, and also at a, at a price point in which they can sneak it into the budget. Exactly. Let's take one more question. Can you mix colors in printing, like pausing what's being printed and switching like the materials to like a different color and then continuing it? You probably, you can't really do that with reliability. I mean, you could swap out a filament spool while a print is in progress, and that might be an interesting experiment. We did test a printer called the XYZ Printing Mix, which is a low-priced, largely consumer uh, model in which you could take two different color filaments and it would automatically mix them either so you get a gradient going from one color to the other uh, or uh, similar mixes. But uh, uh, I mean, you could experiment with that. Uh, I haven't heard much in terms of people actually doing that in practice. One more question. Are there printing materials that conduct electricity? Someone's talking about uh, like 3D printing circuit boards. Well, th I mean, there are pr 3D printers for uh, circuit boards. Th those are not, uh, they're sort of out of our, at least purview in terms of what we would review, but there, there is a lot of potential for, uh, for that. There's also uh, materials that mimic uh, real world things. For instance, MakerBot came out with a hammer 
which combines uh, 3D printing with, uh, with metal, I think like steel filings or something. And the handle is made out of a filament which contains some wood. And they actually have some of the, product, uh, the properties such as magnetism. Hmm. But in terms of uh, full scale uh, 3D printing for circuits and the like, I mean, that's something that's professionally done um, I mean, the, it's, a, it's an open field, and I, I hope eventually that will be something that, is, uh, that makers uh, have more free access to, and, uh, and there's a lot of potential in that. Okay, great. So uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for engaging. This is the Dremel Digilab 3D45 3D printer. Four and a half stars, editor's choice, our choice for a mid-range 3D printer right now, $1,800 on Amazon uh, if, you, if you choose to buy it. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing with PC Mag. Uh, if you are on Facebook, uh, please return at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. We'll have another cool thing. If you are on YouTube, please like and subscribe and check back every weekday on our YouTube channel and we'll have another cool thing for you.